well, the cop comes in, the off-duty cop comes in, and he's like, we're in the room, and he asks us, are you guys all Everybody over 21? Everybody over here over 21? It's like, <laughs> if we, we were, were like, 20. <laughs> there was like one or two people. I forget. Like I know there was probably like over 10 people in there. Yo, and like 100%. only like one or two were above 21, yeah, older than 21. Yeah, Everybody else was like 20 or under. We were like, we were all like, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, sir. <laughs> and the funny thing is like, you know, like your parents, like they tell you like, don't do anything. Da, da, da. And like, oh, I was just yeah. like, yeah, no, no. I was like, damn, the first time I actually go out. <laughs> I'm about to like go to jail, you know, call my parents and I'm in jail and everything. I was like, damn, I'm never going to be let out again and whatnot. That crossed my mind. Um, I was like, like, damn, I'm going to jail. Yeah. Cause, cause <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Carlos Granados podcast. My name is Carlos and today I am having another special guest, one of my best friends, and to be honest, a very, very long time friend ever. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. How's it going, man? Having a great Saturday. Can't complain. That's good, brother. So chat, family, familia. Uh, thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for uh, all the love that you show me in, in my podcast. Um, it's been great. It's a blessing. Don't forget that we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, and also Amazon Music. And to everybody who has subscribed to my YouTube channel, you know, commented, don't forget to turn on the notifications. You know what I mean? So whenever I go live or whenever I post a video, you won't miss it. But without further ado, let's get right into this episode. Ever, man. So listen, we're going to start telling people how we met, how how our relationship started. Because a lot of people wonder, you know, like, how are you guys been friends for so long? But we went, we've we been through the <laughs> ringer, bro. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know. We went through it. We, we, we've been through it, man. As friends, we've been through it. But... Uh, do you okay? I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you remember like the first memory of me, or like when did we meet, or when did you see me for the first time? And I'll tell you mine. I, I think a good. I remember seeing you in was it high school in the ESOL hallways. I don't know if it was ESOL. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell no! <nah. laughs> I think a, a clear memory was more in football. Football. I think football. We got. Yeah. That's kind of when we kind of got together we, yeah we, we spent a lot of time together we had that uh it was it wasn't like training camp in the summer you it was it, it, oh. it was like that gym i remember my mom and your mom they used to work out yeah there while we were waiting what was um, the name of the gym i forgot it's somewhere around P something performance p but it, it it was i think it was like summertime but it was kind of like training or the springtime i forget what it was yeah um, it was spring. Those were good times. Yeah, dude. So <laughs> I've actually tried looking up that place to try to see if, like, hey, like, I think they closed it. That's what I, I think. Was. Yeah, it's P. I I forgot something. But it, it was different something. workouts, but it was good. It was good. So for my, my first memory of you was I think back in like seventh grade because we went to the same middle school. Shout out to Sweetwater Middle School, Bergmont High School. So we went to the same middle school, and I remember seeing you in the hallways. But I was taking a class that was because of ESOL. And it was called uh, Read 180. I don't okay. know if you ever, I don't think you ever took that. Yeah, it was for us dummies, you know, because we we had <laughs> to learn how to read in English. And I still don't know, unfortunately. But I remember uh, taking those classes and throughout the semester, you know, you would get like, um, you would progress and you would do a little bit better, blah, blah, blah. But I remember seeing you in those hallways. And then eventually I saw you back in uh, ninth grade. And then I had a crush on one of your, uh, on the on your girlfriend at the time, <laughs> and she was in my class. But I didn't, I really know who you were at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Yo, it's like, damn, this she's beautiful, bro." <laughs> <laughs> we shall mention no names. <laughs> <laughs> we should say no names. Uh, but eventually, we started playing football, and that's where we remember each other mostly because um, we were tenth grade. We were tenth grade. Yeah, I started playing grade. football tenth grade. Bro, those are some really good times. <laughs> football days. Feet. <laughs> Feet, man. Coach Elmore, bro. I'm telling you, my man's put us to work, man. You know what, though? Um, during that time that you were talking about the Performance Institute, that was a really good time because that's when our moms met. Yep. Yeah, they met because they used to drop us off yep. at that um, Performance Institute. I don't know what, what I, I think was. they ended up actually, you know how they had like treadmills and, yeah. and all that? They actually, and it, and it was like an hour workout or something like that. Yeah. They ended up working out. While waiting for us there. Yeah, I remember that. And they used to wait for like an hour, bro. Yep. <laughs> but that institute was... It was actually it was, good. It was nice. It was good. It's good. It, it We definitely got faster during yeah. that time. So that, and then eventually um, I moved 
from Burkmar, went to Brookwood, graduated, and then in high school, in college, uh, we were uh, we went to GGC, and mm-hmm. that's where we reconnected again. Yep. Because uh, you knew Stephanie, and then uh, I remember we met. Like, we made like this little click yeah. at that time, and we started playing football again, flag football. Flag football. You know, yo, what a time, bro. <laughs> You know what's funny? I remember when we were throwing the football at GGC in the lawn. Yep, in front of the library. In front of the library all the time, bro. We will skip class for, for doing that, dude. It was a uh, football, the, what was it, the food court? Food court, oh my <laughs> God, dude. Ah, <laughs> oh, what a time. There were good times. There were good times. Been the food court, uh, sometimes we will skip to go eat pupusas. That was good. Great times, That bro. was good, yeah, With man. A bunch of friends and everything. It was good, man. It was good. And um, after that... Uh, we were doing um, well. We both transferred to Georgia State yep. uh, at the same time as well, yep. and you know I think that's where we had even uh, a bigger connection. Yeah. But people don't know like there was a time and period that for the well for the people that know us, there was a time and period where we didn't talk for like a year or two. Do you remember that? Yeah, we I, had like big spurs in time where we didn't, yep. didn't we didn't speak at all. I think like. Um, Kind of that beginning period was when you moved to Brookwood. Yeah. You know, there, there was some communication there, but not as how, obviously, you being at Burkmar. Yeah. And then there was that. And then kind of GGC kind of picked up. And then even GSU, it was somewhat slow, but then yeah. eventually picked up once we got into what, you know, everything we went to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we were, I remember we were in, I think it was, um, I think it was like our second year. And at GSU, second or third. Well, remember GSU, we took accounting. <laughs> we took... <laughs> oh, my God. We took accounting and what other classes? <laughs> there were some good classes. I think I know accounting, we took it together. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dude, accounting, I will go to accounting class and just be like, what? Well, what you have 300 there? people in there. It's like, <sighs> man. I, I think at GSU is one of the hardest classes you could take. Uh, accounting, what yeah. was that like? Was it 11? No, it was like 12, 20. I don't even know what it was. It was 11 something. I think no, it was 12, 200 and I don't even know what it was. But I counted. It was, it was so accounting tough. one. I'll call it accounting one and there's accounting two. Accounting one, yeah. yeah. I, I thought I wanted to be an accountant. I did too. Until I actually <laughs> took an accounting class. <laughs> different, that's different math. It's weird, it's, bro. It's, it's different. The t- professor was talking about, oh, these are smokes. Like, it's like it's <laughs> smokes in, 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 the, a, in the question. A term, I was like, bro, what are you? What are you talking about? Where the numbers at, bro? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but after that, um, remember we used to go to the gym all the time. Yep. Yeah, we used to go to the GSU gym all the freaking time. It was a vibe, man. Those, those were are, those were good times. Yeah, those are good. I feel like they're very sim- simplistic times. Yeah, I, I think it, it was. You know, we did go to school, take care of business, what we had to do. Yeah, academic wise and everything, we yeah. enjoyed. You know, we went to the gym. We actually, had a schedule. It's like, hey, when are you gonna go to the gym? Yeah, and then food court kind of there. Yeah, <laughs> the food court is always a vibe. I, I don't think there it was like fully on when we were, you know, we were still taking some classes and half of our, our major classes uh, yeah. where st- life was still somewhat still simplistic. Vibe. Yeah, because for, I mean, from freshman year to like your sophomore, even going into like junior, it was very yeah. vibey. Yep. Like life was good. You just go to school, nothing crazy. It was after Once that where life you 3,000, 4,000 yeah. level classes. That's when it's like, nah, I got to study. <laughs> yeah, I actually got to study now, bro. I actually got to put in that work, bro. Um, But talking about the times we didn't speak, I remember we didn't speak for like a year, bro. And like, you did what, you know, you did what you were doing. Yeah. I did what I was doing. And eventually, like, we ended up reconnecting again. And I feel like, I wouldn't just call it destiny, but I feel like, you know, you always, you, to be good friends, you also have to give that person, like, you know, their space too. Yep. Sometimes you have different stages in life you go through and sometimes you need different people or sometimes you need different family members or sometimes you're just not doing much and you're just vibing. Like I, I, I think a, like as guys, and it's funny because I had a friend call me um, yesterday or Thursday. Okay. Um, you know, him and I, we we text and we send memes to each other. Um, it's actually Zach. He's an Eagles fan. Oh, um, uh, you're a Cowboys <laughs> fan? That's not a good look. <laughs> so um, he, he's uh, he's husband to one of... Uh, a friend that we went to school together. Okay. Him and I, we text, uh, you know, here and there, obviously more during football season. Right. Uh, but as guys, I, I think, you know, you could go a year without seeing each other, but it's like, Hey, how you been? You know, it just catch up. And it's, it's as of things never change. Yeah. Uh, there was a, there was a meme. No, that's cool. There's a meme that, uh, I seen, uh, one time it was like, 
how are you guys get along so how guys get along so yeah. fast and you guys don't even know each other's name <laughs> like how do you even know their name well we, we wait until somebody asks for it yeah. or somebody mentions it like oh there you go <laughs> but it's like, like we can go for a long time without you know saying or doing much and when we reconnect it's like yeah. automatic uh, that happened to uh oscar you know oscar yeah. right we went to the gy party like we hadn't talked in so long yeah but as soon as we jog- saw each other bro it's, it's like years. it's as yeah years bro and because we used to play a lot of call of duty yeah. together remember that time yeah. so as soon as i saw him again i was like automatic it was like yo you know <laughs> bianca as well like we were just vibing it's like if, if like we didn't miss a beat okay. it was just natural you know what i mean yeah i was like it's you know it's it's pretty 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 cool it's a good so, feeling yeah it's a, it's a good feeling and eventually when i get into you know more of our faith and how we start even connected even closer yep. um but let's speak let's transition into uh your work i do something on my youtube channel where i want people to uh, experience and listen to different uh careers and how yep. they got there you know what i mean maybe because your process was different than others and a lot of people think that there is just one way to get to certain things, but no, there's different ways to get to different careers. And you're very successful in your career and you're doing very well. And from what you've told me, you're heading in a really good direction. So uh, if you can tell the people how you got into uh, being a uh, project engineer yeah. and then eventually maybe what steps are going to be there afterwards and then what's your plan and things like that. So okay. how did you become that? And, you know, how were you able to get there? So my kind of road is kind of weird because I got a computer science degree from Georgia state. Right. Um, I really thought, and even then I didn't know what I want to do once I got into school. Um, you know, I thought I did wanted accounting that kind of moved around. <laughs> I did economics, switch my, my major to economics for one semester. That really wasn't it. And computer science. Um, I, I thought that was, a, you know, figuring I love math, um, not accounting math, but just math overall. Yeah. Um, so kind of one of those, my mom, she's always pushed me to get a degree. Um, but even while I was in school, uh, you know, I started as a painter. Um, I know you had the same experience. Uh, yeah, you did baby. Some painting. Shout out to the painting game. <laughs> so uh, I did work in the field a couple of years and I, you know, I get the opportunity to work in the office. I did some estimating for a couple of years, about three or so, then, you know, get promoted to a uh, project manager there. That was kind of my step in knowing um, a little bit in the construction side. Uh, right. I, I think... Since I was small, uh, I've always kind of enjoyed the building side. And that doesn't have to be, you know, just construction. It could be mechanical. Just being seeing something from nothing to something. From that's, the ground that's, up. That's always been something interesting for me. Um, and, you know, I got the opportunity a little bit past COVID. Um, I had a, you know, I, I definitely want to take a different step in life. I, I thought, you know, painting is great, but I feel like I just need something else in life. What's my next step? Right. Um, I think the bigger picture for me was I want to stay in the construction. I didn't want to, I, I kind of, I did do some research, kind of see, hey, is computer science for me? Right. Um, <clears throat> I did look in that and I, I really wasn't comfortable with it. I did some, you know, some website designs and yeah. it, it, it just wasn't it. Right. Um, so I wanted to stay in the construction kind of field. Um, I did an introductory, did um, some interviews for, project engineer and it's for construction wise um so i do work i'm a project engineer for a construction company general contractor in atlanta um and at least for me i got the the opportunity to get a couple interviews uh fortunately um i was able to you know join the team with them um and it's been two years a little bit over two years now yeah pushing two years in a month I remember when you were making that uh, that transition, yeah. and you told me how hard it was because you know you were step, you were stepping out of your comfort zone. Yeah. But I and, think that's something important to to mention. You and, know? and and I think kind of that's the it, it's you know you have to see in a bigger picture. Hey, I'm comfortable where I'm at. You know, I, what changed me was what do I see myself in five years? Right. What do I see myself doing? You know, you know, it's is it a cycle? Is you know, for me, every day is different. Essentially, everything's kind of the same in, in the scope of work, but right. everything is different. And gotcha. I love that. Um, so at least for me, I got the opportunity. Um, and it's so far, it's been great. Right. I, I've loved it. Wouldn't change a, a thing for the world. For it. I've had to change some things. Yeah. Get out of my comfort zone. My schedule, it's not, you know, I love to chill. Now you got to work a little bit more, but in the bigger picture, you know, it does pay off. Yeah. Because um, you're, you're working towards something yep. even, even better. Because uh, you told me that after... Um, being a project engineer, uh, you eventually you will be able to qualify for 
become oh, a project manager. Assistant, manager. assistant project manager. And then, yep. so assistant project manager, and then... You get a uh, project manager, and then there's the uh, senior project manager. Okay, cool. And then there's, like, VP level and everything. So there's growth. Yes. And I think that's what matters. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to be in a <laughs> place that... that for <laughs> me, I want to understand, hey, what's the structure to yeah. get there? What do I right. need to get to get there? I, yeah. I'm willing to put in the work. Right. Um. It's just, I, I want to see that plan kind of laid out. And I think overall, and... I, w- I would say after 21, it's like, you know, there's some room for growth. I right. think after 25, I, I kind of grew up a little bit. Right. And trying to understand, hey, like, what am I going to do in life? Right. You know, do I want to be successful. How do I be successful? Yeah. And that road is different for everyone. Correct. Obviously, I feel like my job, I love doing my job. I don't feel like it's a job. Right. Um, But I love doing it. And that's how you know. It's yeah. like. You love it because if you don't feel like it's a job, then it's like you know. It's you you get those times where it's like, man, I'm tired, but you love it. But you love Once it. Once you're there, you love it. That's awesome, man. Um, another thing that you mentioned <clears throat> that I thought thought stood out to me, uh, because I think this maybe even applies to both of us, but like even the fact that you got a degree and now that you thought you were gonna be in, and you know, life had other plans for you, mm-hmm. and I think that's something important to mention because people. Um, and I've seen, you know, either, either friends and family, like they get this notion of like, you know, whatever degree you have to be in. And if you don't work there, like, you know, there's like that pressure and you're yeah. like, nah, man, like if that degree was able to open doors for you yeah. to become in something else that, you know, God had planned for you, you better take that a hundred times out of a hundred times, yeah. you know, don't be feeling bummed out about it. And, um, the fact that you have a degree, especially in computer science, like, that's really something you can fall back on. Yep. Like if nothing works out and there's a you backup know, plan, it's such a good backup plan. Are yep. you kidding me? That's really good. Like the, you, you have a really good chance of, you know, not ever being in a place where uh, you used to be when you were like a, a, a broke college student. Right. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> <The> struggles, <laughs> struggles and stuff. It literally had a hundred dollars for the week. <laughs> That's all. Figure out we how you got last. gas and food <laughs> and, we made and it life last. is good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a great, backup plan to have but since you had experience somewhere else when it came to painting yeah. and you know you know the in and outs of of painting that opened another door for you to even you know get interviewed at yeah. a company and even though i'm assuming you didn't know everything about uh I, construction I, I still don't and but you you learn right you know not you're not born knowing everything yeah but as long as you're willing to put in the work doors are open yeah and, and i think that's a Another important fact that I want to even get into, let's say that door is open for you for that interview, right? Yeah. It's the way you carry yourself with a little bit of knowledge, with your charisma, with how people, like when you interview, how they precede you and like what kind of potential do you have? That's important when you go into interviews and, you know, people see you for the first time. And even though they know because they know better than you that there are some things you don't know, or maybe a lot of things you don't know, they're still willing to give you that chance because of what they saw when they interviewed. Like, again, a lot of people want to have all these qualities to qualify, which is perfect. Like, I I get it. But sometimes even when you don't have that, you can make it up somewhere else, right? You can make it by your work ethic. How hard do you work? Do you show that? Do you let them know, I've done this and this and that? And also, even though I don't know, I'm a teachable person. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to work. And I'm willing to show you that goes farther than just you saying like, hey, this is what I have, blah, blah, blah. But when you get into the interview and when you meet them, <laughs> nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like people, but we're human beings, revive up emotions, right? Yeah. Especially people who do a lot of interviews usually, they would see through BS yeah. because, you know, of so many people like the yeah. spec, right? And they will know who's like, okay, this person doesn't know it all, but... I feel like they can do something with I, I, it. I think it's given me the opportunity. And a, again, you know, we're not born knowing everything. Right. But at the same time, it's I'm teachable. Correct. Um, if you're teachable and you're willing to put in the work, that goes a long way. Who do we give a shout out to? <laughs> <laughs> Who do we give a shout out to, Ever? To God. <laughs> Ayo, amen, brother. That's cool, man. And I think that's very cool, though, being teachable, even saying that. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get her. Should also shout out to Selena because <laughs> she taught she, she that word. I've, I, I've been using it in all my interviews, and it's worked so far. So, you know, that's uh, it's really, really good. Yeah. So, anything else that you feel like um, that you would um, maybe you could tell uh, somebody who's trying to get into product project managing, yeah. or uh, who wants to be in that field of uh, 
field of cons- of construction. Any advice that you have for them or maybe something they can prepare for? Uh, I know, you, again, you had a different route, yeah. but, you know, you basically got to that point and now you're staying there in that realm and probably going to grow in that situation too. I think kind of like the road to take for that or your typical is you go to, th- to school and you do, what is it, construction science. You get a degree in construction science. Well, that's the thing. Um, so essentially, you know, you do construction science, you intern with all these general contractors, and then you sign on. You, you can either work in the field, um, end up being like a superintendent, which is like a field project manager. Okay. Or you work in the office. Um, that's your typical. Now, I will say, I think I am lucky and I am blessed to be... Granted, I do have some experience. Yeah. But I, I think there were some doors and opportunities that I was given. Right. That's like, I was shocked myself. I'm not saying I, I didn't doubt myself, but it's like, you know, I, I think at least for me, God was, he was paving the way for me, opened these doors up for me. And I kind of displayed, hey, this is what I can do. And I, I'm willing to put in the work. I'm willing to learn. Yeah. And, you know, be what I'm saying that I can do. Right. Um. So I th- I, even at a at a young age, you know, we we definitely think that we can do all this and that. When reality hits, it's so much different so much to different. what we we learned yeah. in school. Um, yeah. But I, I do think it's you know, I think in, in that it's kind of who you know, but yeah. at the same time, it's the big bigger picture is be teachable. Yeah. Um, that is a it, that goes a long way. Um, I think pay attention to a lot of things. You know, people want to learn. A lot of things, but at the same time, it's just listen. And with one of the bigger things, at least that I've seen, is great leaders are hard to find. Um, wow. I, I would say my boss, he's he's a, he's a perfect person because he he listens and he the way he talks and everything, he can lead. I, I, I honestly, <laughs> I, I I could say in my team, my company, I love where I'm at. Right. I love it. Yeah. Um, I think you know I go there in the morning. I love it, but it's just the people there. If they're willing to give you that opportunity, make the best out of it. Right. Um, you know, there are many ways to get there, but I, I, I think it's just actually putting in the work. Right. Got you. Um, do you feel like are there are any qualities that you need to have? So you say so you mentioned leadership and like particular qualities, qualities that you need to have to get into that field or, well, you mentioned too, teach, teachability, yeah. uh, leadership, maybe anything else? Or? I, I think it's caring about, at, at least in that, it's you want to care about others. Um, gotcha. There's that comp- compassion. Got gotcha. you. Someone in a sense, um, because you're doing this to serve people. Right. You know, you're you're serving one way or the other. Gotcha. Um, but I, I think it's why do you want to do it? Why do you want to do this? Right. So um, ask those questions. Yes. That's good. And you know, even when you talked about, uh, I don't want people to miss this because uh, we've grown in our faith a lot, and we're not perfect. We're yeah. we're trying to you know get to a good spot in life. But remember when? Well, right now you mentioned that. We pray, you prayed about your job and God yeah. put you in the spot. So for the people out there that don't know, we uh, had a, a man small group, I think, about a year and some change ago. It lasted. We went hard for about yeah. a straight year. We met almost every week. But it, <clears throat> let me tell you something cool about that group. There was a lot of men, and all of us were very imperfect in one way or another. And... You know what happened, though, even though we were very imperfect and we knew that we have so much flaws, we would at least show up every single week. Like if we didn't show up, it would be for like a really good reason. Or if people miss, it would be for like good reasons. But that constant group of men that we had, we were showing up every single week with a passion, with a fire to try to learn um, and to try to get better. You know what I mean? And the point I, I say all of that is because we prayed Every time that one of us were either going through uh, interviews or uh, uh, try to get job promotions or maybe switching jobs or maybe praying about where to go, like for God to open doors, every time we prayed (laughs) and every time we prayed over that somebody, everybody, everybody either got the promotion, uh, either got a new job or God guided them to another opportunity where those doors were open that landed a new job every single time we didn't fail one time. And to this day, we continue to yeah. go in that route, even though our small, we don't have the man small group in, uh, uh, anymore. But, um, but I remember that we were making like a joke, like, yo, we're like five for five. 
<laughs> we haven't missed. But it, it wasn't even us. God hasn't missed. <laughs> but we're like six for six, seven for seven. And it went to, went to like 12 for 12, 15 for 15. Like we were just getting, you yeah. every time we would pray about that. And I think it has a lot to say, not about us, but about sometimes when we want something from God, he just wants you to meet halfway. He wants to see your effort because yeah. that's something you can control, your effort. And the fact that we were showing up, we were genuine, we came here, we came in knowing and accepting that we're very flawed, but we still came to him and like prayed about it and asked for guidance. And to be honest, I feel like that's one of the reasons you got, you yeah. know, a, a great situation. And a lot of us, all of us, like we feel like we've been in great situations for that. So that's something like a good testimony to have. You know, for, for that specific group, I feel like we did really, really good, yeah. you know, good things. You know what I mean? That was good. Thank you for sharing that, man. That's a, I think that's a very important for people to learn and, and things you do. And if you have anything else, um, just let me know through the through the ways and stuff and not that. So as usual, I'm going to transition into our, into our faith uh, because I feel like that's very important. And that's one of the reasons even we got even closer yeah. um, because I felt like we left a lot of um, the human ways. And I don't want to say like that, but like, I feel like our relationship, we kind of, you kind of try to make it more about God now. And you see how small things are like so irrelevant as you keep getting older. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you're just like, nah, it's better to have good people around your life and just, you know, that, uh, it's the th quality over the quantity. I like that. I like that. Preach brother, preach brother <laughs> E, preach. So, uh, talk to us about your faith, man. Um, how has it been since you, um, since you have gotten trying trying to gotten closer to God, what's what things have changed? Maybe some perspectives. What has changed in your life, and uh, maybe something that could affect or somebody that's hearing or listening or watching, uh, you know, can, can get from you uh, in that situation. So I think um, I guess even you know when I was small, uh, my mom she's always kind of put God first or kind of always pushed us to go to church. That's always one of those. Ah, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go to church. Um, I think I accept, I was like the God, I believe I was like 13 or so. Um, but then even then, I'm still a teenager. You know, it's like, yeah. hey, like, I, I love God, accept God, but there's there's more than that. Right. Um. Really, there's always been, I believe in God, I love God, but there's not the consistency in, you know, God this or God that. You always look towards him on the down times. Right. You always got to be there on the good times as well. Right. Um. I honestly... I think I came closer to God, you know, when you invited me to victory, I, I got closer to God, you know, going to victory and kind of trying to push that, reevaluating my life, where am I at, you know, what's important and what needs to happen. Um, so I do thank you for that. No, <laughs> it's all, uh, listen, man, it's all God, bro. Like, uh, I, I'm glad, you know, that's funny that I'm glad that you're able to, to see like what a, what a friend group you know, yeah. inside of church looks like instead of outside of yeah. church, like the difference is it's, and, and people on the outside think it's, you know, there's certain perspectives that they see. It's like, Hey, like if you get to God, you got to give up these things and everything. But it's like, you know, it's a different lifestyle. Yeah. And you know, by far we are not perfect. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody is perfect. There's only one person that's perfect yeah. and there's not even a person. Yeah, right. Um, um, but at the same time, you know, we every day try to, sh strive being better than that and yeah. kind of follow his footsteps and, right. and be a mirror image of jesus um, right. that being said i don't know if you know but i'm actually getting baptized next sunday <laughs> wait at the baptism inside are you serious i signed up <laughs> so, yo so last time congratulations bro <laughs> gang last time at least for me how i've kind of like evaluated it's like hey like you know there's always that what you're feeling in your bro, heart i'm so excited <laughs> Oh, that's so dope. <laughs> I'm about to cry. Hold up, Jay. Take five, Chad. <laughs> Take five. That's awesome, man. So I, last time, I, and I forget when, Victory, it was, um, they had the outside baptism. Yes. And I was like, okay, like, I'm, I want to get baptized. I, at least for me, I've always thought of it different. Like, hey, I want to analyze it. I want to research everything. Obviously, you know, there's God and everything, but it's like, I have to feel it. Right. So last time it was like, it was the outside and I was like, I want to get baptized and everything. But it's like. I didn't do it. Um, not that I didn't feel it in my heart, but I was like, I, I don't know. Yeah, you don't. You don't right. And then after it happened, I was like, I missed my chance. You know, I, I I felt just something. I felt guilty and just I felt something. Right. And then this time when uh, I remember going to church and I saw like they, they put it up on there. It's like, oh, we're going to be having like baptism Sundays. I was like, 
this is my chance. Wait, so it's not this Sunday? It's next Sunday. It's next Sunday. It's November the serving, 5th. It's the serving Sunday. Yeah, yes. Yes. Are we serving that Sunday? Yes. It's next Sunday. I'm doing Yo. it the, after the 9 o'clock, so. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're about to be. So uh, they're doing it inside? Out, they send an email and it's inside. I'm figuring because the weather's going to be a little yeah. cold. Um, if it's outside, it's cold. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you like the cold anyways. <laughs> But um, I'm I'm definitely excited. Um, I think I've, I, at least for me, it's something I've. My mom, she's she's talked about it all my life about yeah. you know get baptized. But I, I think it's, I want to do it. I feel it's about time, and I, I definitely you know I, I need to make some changes, and I'm excited. Let's go, bro! I'm so proud of you, man. <laughs> I'm seriously proud of you because that's a big decision. Yeah. Um, first of all, for anybody who's listening, who's a friend of ours or watching. Uh, uh, Victory Norcross, let's go support the homie. Let's go watch him get baptized at Victory. And it's funny because only you and so, uh, Selena and my mom know. So now <laughs> you guys, you guys here. Hey, now everybody gonna know. <laughs> so I'm I'm excited, dude. I can't wait, man. I can't wait. That's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be a. That's a great decision, bro. Yeah. It's a great decision, and you know what? Now that we're speaking about. Um, because a lot of our friends that even that know us, we speak a, about a lot about God, right? Yep. But <clears throat> we also do understand that we still have a lot of issues. Like, for example, <sighs> let's get real. Let's get a let's get mixy real quick, ever. <laughs> We've growing up, right? It's when we didn't have or we didn't have to try to have the relationship with God yep. as much as we tried. We dealt with a lot of lust issues, and even till now, we deal with yep. lust, even. Uh, now that, you know, we're trying to have a bigger relationship with God, like, we still suffer from that. We don't hide that. We don't deny yeah. that. I don't want people to watch us, especially you know us, like, oh, these guys are faking. No, we don't yeah. fake who we are. We'll tell you, I'll tell you straight to your face what I'm struggling with. And for a long time, you know, for 20 years, we've been in that world of, like, probably plus yeah. lust, you know, sex, pornography, you name it, right? And it's something that a lot of men deal with, and it's not that we don't try to get better, but it's like, it's probably one of our biggest struggles as men Yeah, deal with lust, to deal with, you know, sin. Like, sometimes I ask God, like, God, why'd you make women so beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously, like, why'd you make women so beautiful, amazing? Like, I'm just like, bro. <laughs> like, it, it, it's it's hard to not be in that. I, it's, it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. And you know what's the hardest part? Even trying to get out, you uh, know? Uh, yeah. Even though trying to get out and try to find your way out because it's been so, uh, it's been such a, unfortunately, a big part of our lives that now is like getting out slowly, slowly. And as soon as you make a good progress, <laughs> bam, you go back down, you get slammed. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's like you get truck when you're playing football, you know, you need the hit <laughs> stick on Madden. That's exactly how it feels. And now you got to get back up and try to see, try to see how you get better at, man. But it's something that, you know, we're not afraid to say. It's a, it's a work in progress, but, you know, it's. I think it's for the better. Yeah. But you know what? I think the most important part is that you're trying and that your effort. And I think also where your heart's at, that's also important um, because, you know, God sees that. Yeah. And I think that's always, uh, again, sometimes half the battle is just showing up, I, trying. I, I think my biggest change probably in life, and, you know, those that know me, they know how I am and everything. Yeah. Um. You can be a person good at heart, but, you know, life is there. Yeah. I think the biggest turnaround for me has probably been the last year. Right. Um, I, I, I think I've gotten closer to God. And by far, you know, I'm not perfect. Right. Um, Correct. But it's, it's baby steps. Right. It's baby steps. You know, it's not going to happen overnight and everything. But it's the little things, little things. Eventually, you know, with God, you're going to get there one day. Right. Um, but uh, it, it's just time. Right. I got you. I respect that, man. And you got to, sometimes we got to be, uh, show some, we got to have grace with ourselves, you know? Yeah. Um, because I feel like, they, I don't know if this is a man thing or just an us thing, uh, because we've always been those type of people that always want to get better, want to do better. And not for malicious reasons or, you know, for selfish reasons or egotistical reasons. It's just, that's the way we just are. We want to be better. Like we wired. want to get better. It's like we're wired that way, yeah. right? I think it also has to do with something with the people we hang out with and even our families, right? Because um, how many of our friends have we seen, you know, unfortunately be stuck in the same place, yeah. you know? I, I think, you know, it's kind of 
who your circle is. Correct. And I think you you've made you've mentioned it before, but at the same time, it's like you know you're doing great. I love it. Yeah. Push yourself. It's like hey, like you push your friends to be greater, even better than you. Correct. And um, and that's where the blessing comes from, yeah. right? A lot of times you like competing with people to try to be the top of the yeah. top and try to pretend to be something that maybe you're not even that. Yeah. But competition is 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 good if it's healthy. There's healthy competition. A healthy competition, yeah. right? Like we've I feel like like you said, who you surround yourself. I I told you this before, right? Yeah. Show me your five closest friends and I'll tell you who you are. Yeah. And this is the same situation. Who you surround yourself, what your what mentality do they have? And you know, I'll tell you what you're probably going to be in the next couple of years. And, and, and I think, I guess, that kind of goes with friends. You know, the older you get, the less people you surround yourself with. Yeah. In high school, you have, you know, half the school so is your friend. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> half the school is your friend. You know? But, like, once you, you get on in life, you grow older, you know, your circles just get smaller and smaller. And then yeah. those people that you surround yourself with, you know, it's going to be five people or however many it is. Yeah. But, you know, it's the important things that that change on that, you know, because your growth, man, you see diff people with different values. Um, you see with people who are trying to get yeah. to different States in life. And you, you may lose people on the way there. We did. We, um, I mean, shit, we've lost some friends in the last couple of years yeah. because of <laughs> crap like that. So, um, we're not going to get into that and that, <laughs> into that, but we have, we've lost some who we thought to be honest, who we thought were really good friends. And I think they're great people, but there are some things missing that, don't fit right with they're your not lifestyle. aligning i guess kind of you know in in our lifetime but yeah. even with your purpose right yeah. and your purpose in life and stuff like that and i think that's important bro like um a lot of people fail to miss that they're like oh why am i doing this like uh why are these guys like this they ask a lot of whys but we're like dude it's because like you know we try to hold each other accountable yeah. Uh, we try to be good to each other beyond the manly things, right? Like yeah. we try to legitimately be there for each because we roast each other a lot. They think this is like a, a, a but it's, <laughs> it's just funny. It's like yeah. okay. okay, we roast each other all the time, and like bro, like sometimes we go to hurt feelings, <laughs> but it's because at the end of the day we look past that yeah. beyond that because there is a bigger. You be arguing, you know, all this time, and it's like next thing you know, it's like, hey, you want to go eat? <laughs> hey, you want to go eat? Are you good? Yeah, it's all the time, bro. We argue, especially when we play video games or anything. Like, oh yeah, we, like we sports. I mean, <laughs> dude, the amount of arguments we've gotten into because mm -hmm. of sports, but it's it's just part of because once that happens, we look at you know we remember who you are with you know as a human being yeah. with your values, what they mean to you. You know what I mean? And that's a, I think that's bigger than anything else. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, man. So. Damn, we got we got deep ever like <laughs> my chest is getting tight right now, bro. I'm getting emotional. I'm actually still like I get happy for the fact that you're gonna get baptized, bro. Um, and the fact that you even started serving at you know Victory, I think it speaks a lot about you. You gotta give yourself props sometimes, man. Sit back and just be like, you know what? We've done something. I'm done. I'm doing something good for my life. Because you think about it, you're 30, trying to get yourself better with um, with the Lord. You're serving at church, you know. Getting baptized, you have a great job, a great family, a great group of friends. Sometimes we miss the fact that how good we actually have it. Obviously, you put we yourself oversee in that spot. it, and yeah. we, you know, at the end of the day, it's like okay, like you always want more. Yeah, but you can say we're in a good spot. Oh yeah, I think it's uh, we're in, we're in humble. Hum, try to you know humble yourself and everything. It's yeah. everything. You're grateful for everything. And, yeah, and the road to get where you you're at. Hundred yeah. percent. That, that's real, bro. So uh, you you've had to go through all those up and downs to where you're at. It's like it's part of the process. Yeah, that is true, though, it's man. That's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of big part of the process. And when you're down, I think that's when like that's the hardest your, part. Your you character gotta get back is built. Yeah, yeah, your character is built. Character is built. Like that situation I went like recently with like my health, dude, yeah. bro. You know, I, I don't know how you do it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, how you do it. I don't know how I do it, dude. Sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to be Sometimes seen, like I'll just have a headache and like, I barely get sick. I'll get sick like once every five years and it'll be like a cough or, or something. He's here sick every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, like I'll get a headache and it's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I get mad at that. I got a headache, like just let it get away. And he's over here like. He can't sleep. It's like, bro, I slept good yesterday. <laughs> Man, I get jealous sometimes at that because I remember when we go out to eat at night and you're just like, all right, I'm going to go to sleep. And I'm like, 
I was like, I, I wish I did that again. <laughs> I was like, I wish I could eat and go right to sleep. <laughs> I have to wait three hours, four hours. I have to stretch, do my stretches. That's a whole schedule itself. Hey, how do my stretches go? <laughs> <laughs> he'll just, he'll, he'll, like, he'll inflate his stomach. <laughs> It's like, what are you doing? It's because I'm. Trying. We'll, we'll go on vacation. Where, where did we go last time? Was it? Um, I think it was. We, where did we go last time? We, oh, we, Costa Rica. We, we went Costa Rica, but yeah. you had your own room, Costa Rica. Was oh, it? Was it no. uh, Tennessee? Um, I think it was Tennessee. It's like I'm in bed. It's like, what are you doing? You hear him like. <sighs> because what? Are, what are you doing? He's like, I'm stretching my diaphragm. My stomach is like, what? <laughs> It's funny because I'm here on my phone <laughs> and I just see him like, what are you doing? Yo, it it's because I'm stretching my diaphragm <laughs> because if it's too tight, it's uncomfortable to sleep. And I wake up with like major chest pains the next day. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's really people who struggle with diaphragmatic problems understand what I'm saying. hundred percent. He says I was on my phone. Like I was just on my phone. He says like three seconds I knocked out. Like, I mean, I, I don't remember falling asleep, but I know I sleep good regardless. Yo, family, check this out. My man was here watching TikTok, right? And I'm like, oh, he's not going to sleep here. We, you know, we're probably going to talk a little bit. Just, you know, we're watching TV in the, in the hotel room. Three seconds later, and I'm like, homie, just watch it. We were just watching TikTok. What happened? I'm like, wait, how, how was it that fast? <laughs> and I was like, I looked at you and I was like, man, I wish I could do that right now because I really need some of that. Oh, man. I can't believe in sleeping is a struggle, man. God, dog. You know what? That'd be like that sometimes, bro. I only pray that God gives me the strength to continue, bro, because uh, it's not easy, man. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And the grind is, the grind is real. We're going to, the grind is 100% real. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's <laughs> That's funny. But, um, Evern, tell us what the future is looking at i like for you um what are you planning on doing what do you got some plans and you maybe some travels or anything in the future where you think you might like to do try new things like what's going on with you like tell of uh, the near future what's so up? i think kind of now um our, our last big trip was costa rica yeah and i loved it um I, what I, a great time I, I think the only like travel i've done is obviously inside the united states you know uh, las vegas california yeah. new york and all that type of stuff but I think just like experience Costa Rica. Other than that, I've just been to El Salvador. Yeah. Um, and El Salvador is just my, you know, what I've been used to is like we visit family and everything. Love it. But outside of what, you know, what we went uh, this last time is like, I loved it. Yeah. Um. So I'm kind of pushing for that big, like just at least one trip, big trip a year. Yeah. Um. Just travel, go see new yeah. places. Right. Um. You know, I want to go to Europe. I want to go to El Salvador again. Mm. What's um, up, bro? Hey, run it back. <laughs> and I just don't have enough vacation like you do. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much vacation. Bro. I wish I could give you some. <laughs> I wish I could give you like a week. I have I have sick days, but I can't use my sick days for vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what if you get sick during the vacation? <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> it's like let me take one vacation day. That's my travel and like my 15 sick days. <laughs> so you're planning on traveling more, is what you're saying. I want to travel more. I, I definitely want to experience a lot more the the world and everything, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Never been to Europe. Um, yeah. And I definitely want to go to South America. I want to go to Canada. Colombia. Hello. Por qué no? <laughs> oh, my God. We need to go. I want to go to Colombia as a single man. Papazito. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's not the smartest idea, to be honest, but I just want to go. because it's, it's so beautiful. I mean, I'll see TikToks and everything. So beautiful. Passport bros. Food, bro. <laughs> oh, man. I, I mean, food. Yeah, yeah. Food, food. Right, right. Right. Yeah, you go to Colombia for the food. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna empanada or yeah, something? Yo, no, but, but Colombian food's fire though. I love Colombian yeah. food. It's good. I wanna go to you know, I wanna go to the I wanna I wanna go to South America myself, man. I wanna we should plan that. We should plan a trip to Colombia. I'm serious. I, I think uh it's hard to plan stuff because it's like, okay, where do you go and everything? Yeah. So it's like, you know, I got it, friends though. I had a friend that told me that uh she could well, I have a lot of Colombian friends that would tell, like, they'll put me on, yeah. on like where to go and where not to go. But I want to go for real, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see what what it's like. Yeah, you you see like you know like TikToks and everything, like Argentina and everything, Chile, Peru. It's like yeah. wow. It's like I'm missing out on all this stuff. You know? Yeah, it's like okay. It's like because you got you're taking care of business here now, so eventually <laughs> you can give those opportunity because traveling will become easier eventually. Yeah. Like the more. 
I, you know, I know people that retire and all they do is travel. It's like that's nice. That's crazy. Yeah. That's wild, man. That's cool. I mean, I so don't want to. We don't want to wait that long, <laughs> but you know, we want to make a little. So I, I think I'm kind of pushing for that. Um, I definitely want to travel more. Um, wait, well, you want to go back for uh, spring again? I mean, run it back every year at that time. Actually, that's a great Dang, time. It's it's a good time. Yeah. It, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's I great. had a good experience. You know, with the little time that that was over there, it yeah. was beautiful. But even the, I think the people you travel with also matters. You know, that, that's it's, important. Yeah. It's important to keep it to keep it balanced. It's a good. It's a good time. Yeah, to keep the the tables balanced. So I think that, at least for me, that's kind of. You know, things have kind of flipped for me. You know, I've been pushing for a house and yeah. and all this stuff. And the way the market is right the now. The housing market is ridiculous, it's not, man. You know, that definitely not attracted of all, at all, but it's uh, that's not for me right now. Bro, we were talking about that in the group chat with the boys. Like, yeah. uh, with jo- I saw that. Bro, I, I, I had my phone on Do Not Disturb. Close to 100 messages. I'm like, bro. And I haven't, I haven't read them yet. Yeah. <laughs> so what we were talking about, I sent, uh, we sent a couple of images, but I sent a, me- a message of like how much you will pay for like a half a million dollar house with like 8% interest. And it's like $4,000 a month. See, when I was looking I'm for like, a house. What the? F- when I was looking for a house a couple of years back, you know, like 250, 300, 350, you were pushing. But a decade ago, babe, you know, you were beautiful buying, houses. Yeah, man. Be- now those houses are like half a million, 600 is like. That's crazy. I, I I can't. Yeah, how's mo- housing market is ridiculous. Man. Like, you got to be rich to afford a house. Yeah, and the thing is, though, you you only you're looking at four hundred thousand dollars houses and five hundred thousand dollars houses, even more, because those are the nice but, houses. But, you want something good. But I mean, you're looking at a four hundred thousand dollars house for a three bedroom, and that's you and know, it's kind of mid. Yeah. So no. I I I can't. You know, I've always pictured myself like okay, a family, you know, children, a beautiful house, and right. everything. Man, that's hard now. Yeah. <laughs> nah. It's a. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's the a, housing market is not it. All I'm saying, um, I'm not ashamed to live at home until that thing get better. I'll tell you that because, yeah. homie, I, I wish <laughs> you're that, making someone richer. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I, I, we were talking to the group chat. I wish <laughs> that we were making this what we're making now ten years ago. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, bro, my house would be. Bro, I remember there was a. I forget. It was like 2013 or something. Um, houses, they, there was like two houses next to us. They were bought for $80,000. Dang. Yeah. And they're worth about like three fifty dollars now. Eighty k? That's a car. <sighs> That's a car. <laughs> Sheesh. And it's worth what now? <laughs> it's like three fifty plus. Oh, my God. Dude, that's wild. Yeah. That's so, wild. And, you know, if, like, if you had a job, it's like $80,000 house. It's like, yeah. yeah. yeah and, and, you know, as you're talking about three-bedroom house. Joseph made a good case. He he made he put something really smart down on on the chat. He basically said, if you're gonna buy a house that big, which let's say for example, if you pay like the example that I just gave you, right, half a million dollar house, eight percent interest, That's a lot. and you will pay like what four thousand dollars a month or something like that, right? And seventy five percent of that, maybe even more, when you pay those four thousand dollars, you're basically it's going to interest yeah. anyways. It's not even going. You know, to the principal. So if you rent, it's actually even better to be renting now a two thousand dollar place instead of paying that four thousand dollars because you'll be paying more on interest. You're throwing away those. Yeah, extra you're $2, literally $2. throwing away. You're literally throwing it away. Math wise, and it, it kind of depends. Like, can you afford it? Like, interest wise, it's e, and, and it it kind of plays like, are you going to keep the house? Because right, if you're planning on keeping the house, which you know you you never know. Um, right. but if you're I would say like our parents' age and everything, where it's like, yeah, this is my house and whatever. Fifteen years loan is better than a thirty year, but it's a lot more. It's so much more. But if you money. see the difference that you pay in interest at the back end, yeah, so much. The uh, it's an actual house itself. Yeah, yeah, because if you if you the, the same example they gave yeah. you with the five hundred thousand dollars, you end up paying over a million dollars for yeah. that house in thirty years. That's crazy. Damn, <laughs> man. That's a whole that's other why house. The house what it is not even gonna worth that. Yeah. Like you know, in thirty years, like that's so I, that's crazy. I, I can't justify. It. I I've been looking at a lot of people that are getting their like real estate licenses and stuff, and like that's cool. Like, but I feel like damn, all these people are getting this at the the worst time. You know, now it'll be cool in the future though. Like yeah. when things start, you know, balancing out. But right now, I was but, like, man, a lot of people have moved to Georgia. <laughs> that traffic, <laughs> that traffic's wild. 
that traffic as well. I remember when we used to go to uh, Georgia State and traffic was still not the worst. You can like, make it there in 30 you minutes. Can make, you can make it there at a good time. 30 minutes. I remember our time because I had some uh, evening classes. It was probably like 6 p.m. to like 9 p.m. classes. You know, I'll, I'll leave an hour before, make it there in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. I got on the HOV lane. But <laughs> I, you just got to know where the police are going to be at and just get out before then. Traffic has gotten so much minutes. worse. And now it's like, it, you know, it might be 11 a.m. in the morning on a Tuesday and oh, there's there's bad. traffic. Sundays, even Sundays. Like when you don't when we go to Victory. Yeah, bro. when we go to church, there's traffic. I'm like, bro, how, Sway? Yeah. How bad is it? It's man? just yeah, bad. A lot of people really move, really move. Like they changed the game for real. And that's the reason everything is up. Yeah. Especially here in Atlanta. Like, that's the reason everything is up. Gas is going down, so. Is it going down? It is. That's good. I mean, I just paid. I just went to fill up my gas. My, my Bro, gas. I filled 97 <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> but you also have a BS truck. <laughs> that's a lot, though, man. Well, you paid that like a week? Yeah. Damn. Last week, it was like 95 or so. Bro. And this is just from home to work. That's it. Not even yeah. like. So the way I say, and, and granted, I've been waking up a little bit late, um, getting to the office like around 8 a.m. And this is where I catch the traffic. So I prefer, usually my schedule, I wake up at 5. Right. And I'm out the house by 6, 6.15. There's no traffic. It's like a 40-minute ride. And then I'll stay later after work, sometimes like 6 p.m. to right. avoid some traffic and spend less on fuel. Because it's the stop and go, gotcha. stop and go. That's what kills it. Uh, that's smart though. To be shopping has a little <laughs> bit of time, but yeah, nah, we're so, getting. Oh my god! Well, my boy, it's about that time. You have anything else you want to say to 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 the people, to the to YouTube? Anything else you want to add to anything we met? Did we did we touch on everything? We good? There, there's a lot we can go on <laughs> yeah, and on. We could go for days. We could um, go to stories. You know, one day. I'm going to have you back so we can just talk about stories, like just funny stories, Story time. just reminiscing and just going back to just Wh- like, Which PCB time do you want to tell? Oh, my God. <laughs> Should we give them a little PCB story? I don't know if they're ready. I don't know if they're ready for that, though. Let's give them one. Let's give them one because what should we... Uh, which one do you want to go with the first one? Was it... Uh, which one was it? There was the one we went with Jalen and Allen, and then there was the one we went with... Uh, Bianca, Louisa, Marine. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good. That one is a, that one was cool. Um, by the way, we should have stayed. We're, all right, we're gonna give you a piece. We're gonna be you PCB stories, but it's, it's gonna be just from our perspective. You know, we're gonna talk about anything, anything else that went on because you know that's people's business. But <laughs> you want to talk about the time you got? You got? We're gonna talk about it. Let's <laughs> Hopefully your mom not listening. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> no. So we went to PCB, um, and we're not like we were at that point. What we were twenty? We were twenty. We were twenty. So yeah, uh, you guys we are. Gonna... We went with Bianca. We were twenty. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we went to PCB for spring break, and we weren't much much of like spring breakers at all. But we I had. Friends... The, I think it was our first time. I think it was our first time going to PCB. So actually, yeah. Break. Yeah. And we were like, for... all right. Let, let's go, you know. It, it, we, we planned it out. We, we, we saw how much money we were going to spend. Um, and I'm, we're going to get right, mixy with it. So the first day we get there, uh, of course, you know, we start, damn, I don't know how much we're going to get it. Because <laughs> it's one thing after another, after yeah. another, after another. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we get there, right? And we, you know, at that time, um, it's PCB. So, you know, we started drinking. Uh, we started, in, you know, rolling, you know. The ganja green, <laughs> the cut, and I remember you telling telling us that you like you don't get high. You know? <laughs> so my man's here tells us like, hey, like yo, like you know, I don't really get high from you know from weed, and I'm just like, dude, you just haven't smoked I, I, there right. Yeah, you that's what I was you told. Haven't smoked, you haven't smoked there right. So we start, you know, because it was like you would inhale and then just blow right. I was like, you're literally wasting it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like because everyone would just <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you see on TV, it's like, it's just smoking. It's like, you have to, like, inhale it. It's like, you just, I was just, like, smoking it in and just blowing it out. They're like, you're literally wasting it. Yeah. But disclaimer, we don't do this anymore. Yeah. We're, this is not us. This is I just, think that was a phase. This is just a little, it, it's beginning Look, of college. Looking at it now, it was a phase, and it's like, man, 
I, so, I was dumb. So let me continue. So my man's here. So he starts, you know, like start smoking. He starts do- doing it the right way. Bro, I check back on him like 30 minutes later. And he's on the couch like this. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> was that that night when I just <laughs> knocked out? <laughs> There's like, that one picture around I, I there. Got it. I might put it on. The, I might put it on the video. <laughs> There's that one picture. I was just asleep. And he's like, he's like this. <laughs> and I was like, "Ever you good?" And you're just smiling <laughs> and just looking at the, us. That was on the couch. <laughs> that was. I remember ca- that. That was on the couch, and we got there around like what twelve, you know, two p.m. or whatnot. Yeah. And you know, we kept like you know drinking and smoking to through through the time and. We all went to sleep like at 8 p.m. <laughs> because we got so messed up. We went to sleep at 8 p.m., woke up the next morning, ran it back, and um, that was the time where the police, all uh, the off duty off duty cop, walked in the room because some yeah. like, the door was like cracked open. Yeah, so we were you know doing what we had to do as college students, and we had a lot of friends in our bedroom. I mean, our bedroom. Whoa, a lot of friends in, in, the in our in a hotel room, and. There was an off-duty cop that came in, and he just let himself in because he saw a door open. Well, he said, I'm the, he said uh, "I don't know if it was, they were drinking in the balcony or something." We were like, drinking, yeah. I, we were we were doing the somebody complained or something. Like yeah, that. what's that thing? The we the chug, funnel, the funnel. We were funneling on on the balcony. The balcony. Of, of, yeah. See, people don't know this about us. People think, oh, you guys are good at two shoes. You don't do no, shit. Nah, there homie. Was a like phase. we, I just don't know the stories, bro. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna we're telling you now. So funneling, and then well, the cop comes in, the off-duty cop comes in, and he's like, we're in the room, and he asks us, "Are you guys all everybody over here over twenty-one? It's like <laughs> we were, were like, twenty. <laughs> there was like one or two people. I forget. Like I know there was probably like over ten people in there, yeah, and like only like one or two were above twenty-one, yeah, older like, than twenty-one. Yeah, everybody else was like twenty or under. We were like, yeah, we were all like, yep, mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, sir." <laughs> and the funny thing is, like, you know, like your parents, like they tell you, like, don't do anything, da da da. And like, oh, I was just yeah. like, yeah, no, no. I was like, damn, the first time I actually go out, <laughs> I'm about to like go to jail. You know, call my parents, and I'm in jail and everything. <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm never gonna be let out again and whatnot. That crossed my mind. Um, it was I was like, like, damn, I'm going to jail. <laughs> yeah, because because we sat down and there was like weed right next to us and uh, the, the that, that that was the time the, that they found some cocaine uh, baggies yeah nah that was that was wild and PC, I, yeah yeah they got rid of that and real fast <laughs> yeah yeah no but the off duty com- uh, officer came in there was a weed right there there was like obviously like you know um uh beer cans and the hookah. alcohol the hookah I, we're like yo we're f- effed up like we i thought about it and the same thing that went through your mind i was like damn i want to call my parents from jail like <laughs> the first thing they tell you not to be doing we we're out here doing it bro like our hearts raising you know this happens but the cop off-duty cop i think he knew what's up like yeah. he knew what we he were doing we're... he's not stupid yeah. but he did try to intimidate us which worked you know and i think was, we want to go get some pizza well, or well, as something. soon as he left as soon as he everybody left everybody left as soon as he left I was like, ever let's fuck, let's get yeah. out of here, bro. Because you you never know if more cops are gonna right. come up. So we left. I took my wallet. I was like, I took my keys, what everything I had. We went to get some pizza, some pizza, and we stayed there for like three to four hours. Just like, yo, should we go back to the hotel or not? Nah? It was a <laughs> paranoid. It was a. You could say it was a good time. That was a great time. It, it was a fun time. That was a great time. Yeah, we. I, I gotta post that picture. I might. I I, I have. That's your. Uh, when you call me, that's your picture. <laughs> He's laying on the. You guys have seen the Hangover. He's laying flat on the floor, just knocked out, like at 8 p.m. Bro, I, and I don't remember going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so those are like my best like naps or sleeps. Like, I'll knock out like this, and, and sometimes like I literally have to be tired. Like, you know, even it will be like 1 a.m. It's like, look, I know how to get myself to sleep. Yeah, I'll just watch videos, and sometimes like I mean TikTok just keeps going, going. On. Yeah. And I'll knock out. Those are the best sleeps ever. Dang. You don't remember what time you fell asleep. You just know you went to sleep and now you it's just knock like you up. up. Man, those are the good days. But we'll end the story there because we're not trying to get too mixy. But we're we're gonna have and just have like a story. Th- that time. was the same time your car started smoking. Oh my god. Wait, you know what? It's not done yet. <laughs> On the way back to PCV, we're carrying well, one of our one of the one of, one the, of the guys, guys. that went. He was like, yo, can you give me a ride back to Atlanta? Because, you know, like... He ran he, out of money. He ran out of money, so he wanted to leave. So I was like, all right, come on, let's go. But during 
the we were, on the were way just back. we were just entering. I remember we were just entering um, Georgia from Alabama yeah. right by Columbus, and um, he was on the phone. <laughs> the car overheated, but it, you know all you just hear is <laughs> boom. And I look in the <laughs> I look in the rearview mirror, uh, like a, a cloud of smoke. I'm like, yo, <laughs> yo. And I was like, chill, I'm talking. <laughs> and it, you just see a cloud of smoke in the back. <laughs> it was a radiator. That was, uh, it was. The cap blew off. The cap blew off. And then uh, it was a long night. I, I think I got home like at two. I don't know what time. Because you had to drop off him, me, and then you you got home. I was so was tired. Long, I was so I, tired that day. I think we were supposed to get home like around 10 or something. Yeah. And it was like past midnight. We had to wait on the car to like, like cool down and everything. Yeah, I, I woke his ass up too. The guy who was riding with he us, was he was sleeping in the back. I was like, nah, we're out here trying to solve this. Like, get your ass. I was up. like, homie, get your ass up because we got a we got a problem to solve. Our car's not moving. He's like, hmm, what? What? It's like, bro, what an experience, dude. I'm glad we had those though, man. We got was, we got uh, those out the way. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's what I call it. We got those out the way. It was, pretty, it was, like a, it was a fun times. It was good times, man. Man, it was good. We're gonna have story time. I promise you, we're gonna have story time. We're gonna tell a lot of stories, uh, so people can hear a lot of you know stories we we've had. It's it's fun. So, hey, brother, I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you, bro. It hey. was a funny story. It was like he kept telling me like, "Hey, come on the podcast," and I just I don't typically like being in front of the camera or I don't like pictures. Yeah, you know, I like know. it's like I feel it like awkward. It's just like, "Hey, picture time." It's like whatever. Yeah, camera. Like I I don't know how to act. How you yeah. you know like. It's like kind of when you're like on Teams or something, you're looking at the webcam. It's like, do you look at the camera or do you look at the screen? Because when you're looking at the screen, you know you can see your eyes looking at the screen and not necessarily like, necessarily the camera. So it's like, okay, like it's kind of weird for me. But it wasn't that bad, right? It, it feels wasn't bad. It, doesn't it feel natural after like you get like yeah. com- once you get comfortable, it, it you want you don't you don't even feel the time. Yeah. yeah, it's good, man. That's what I tell people. It's like as soon as you get comfortable, it's a wrap. Like it's real fast. Yeah, Ooh. but hey, family. Thank you guys for listening and watching another episode. First of all, if you guys, you know, are not following me on the U- or subscribing to the YouTube channel, make sure you go do that. I put my videos on 4K, so you know the highest quality you can have right now. Uh, also, if you haven't followed me on um, TikTok, you can do that. I leave the links below in the description. Uh, I post a lot of shorts daily as well on my YouTube channel. And listen on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, and also Amazon Music. I, I post my video on both my um audios on there every single week and i'm planning on having even more like christmas specials especially thanksgiving specials because it's gonna be it's gonna be legit you know those are thanksgiving's my favorite holiday so we're gonna talk a lot about food so to eat at everybody's house <laughs> yeah that's the plan that's the plan that's the only right way to do it so thank you guys for watching thank you for all the love don't forget to like share and subscribe and you know as always uh take care of each other and peace and love familia see you guys on the next one